Good afternoon, everyone. I am Joseph Mariani, and I will be your host tonight on The Think Box, the 5 p.m. news here on the ONN Orno News Network. Today, in Hibbing, we have discovered new facts about its historical and economic history, and we will be going live from the Iron Range itself. Thanks, Joey. I'm in northern Hibbing to talk about the historical and economic history in Hibbing, Minnesota. After Henry Oliver took over the mining industry of Minnesota in 1893, he opened what is now known as the world's largest iron ore mine. It's still running today. It actually became so productive that in, in the 1910s, they actually had to move the town two miles south near the town of Alice. In North Hibbing, they still have signs that are up from the 1920s. Working in the mine was dangerous work. These were all the deaths in two years. 96 people died in the Oliver Mining Company in St. Louis County. Because of the two world wars and the Industrial Revolution, the town made lots of money off the high, off the high taxes of the minerals being mined in the mine. And such things they spent the money on include the bocce ball courts, the Hibbing High School, and the racetrack. And now a live report from Cole Joseph at Hibbing High School. When the Henry Oliver Mining Company started buying up Northern Hibbing to mine for the iron ore under the town, they built this beautiful school as a gesture to the town to help it through its moving process. Let's go check it out. Such as Hibbing High School, which opened its doors in 1920, is one of the highest property values for a school in the entire country. It cost $6 million to build, and today it's worth over $50 million. With Belgian windows and an organ from Austria, this is truly more of a palace than a school. In 1959, Bob Dylan, better known as Robert Zimmerman here in Hibbing, graduated from Hibbing High School in 1959 and soon became a world-famous author, poet, and musician, and he even won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Hibbing High School is the world of the old and world of the new. It still has the 1920s feel, but was renovated in the 1990s. Here at Hibbing High School, they have a wall commemorating all the famous athletes and coaches throughout the history of Hibbing High School. They have everyone from Kevin McHale to my great, great uncle, Angelo Taddy. He coached here for 36 years and was inducted into the Minnesota High School Hall Co Coaches Hall of Fame in 1987. The Android Hotel was built by the Oliver Mining Company to provoke the move from the bocce ball courts are a prime example about how Hebbing spent its money in the first half of the 20th century. Not many towns had it, but Hibbing did. And fun fact, they actually called it butchy ball here instead of bocce ball. The Hibbing horse racing track was founded in Hibbing's heyday and was funded by the Oliver Mining Company. T today it was mostly a car racing track, but the back then it was mostly a horse racing track. And now live from the Greyhound bus station, it's Cole Joseph. When they moved from cars to buses in 1927, this was one of the very first buses that was made. In 1927, this is what the interior of a Greyhound bus would look like. And this is what it would look like to drive one. After World War II, there wasn't as much a demand for iron ore or steel in the United States. On top of this, the U.S. government and big mining companies discovered huge deposits of higher quality iron ore in Labrador, Canada, and South America. This caused the companies to lay off their workers, and this caused a main recession here in Hibbing and the surrounding areas. And this caused them to struggle for many years over time. Until the past 20 years, Hibbing hasn't really had much business, but now the mines have reopened and more people are getting their jobs back. Thank you, Cole Joseph, for that wonderful and inciting piece of history on this wonderful town of Hibbing, Minnesota. I hope you join me next time on The Think Box. Mm -hmm.